Welcome back everyone. So today I'm going to show a program I made. Uh, it's called the Word Counter. And my inspiration behind this was that I was looking through some trials and they were going through a lot of forensic uh, digital evidence and they had to digest and, and look at, as lawyers, a lot of the uh, information and, and how they're going to consume all that to put into their case. Uh, and this is both an issue for defense and for prosecution side, or for, I guess even if you're doing a civil case. And so I was thinking, how would you do that? And one way would be to figure out what are some, what are the most common words being used in the documents? So I decided to create an application that will go into a folder uh, and create a, an analyzed report for each file in there that will give the word count of all the words inside of it. So it'll find all the unique words, and then uh, if it finds it again, it'll just keep ticking up and, and give us a count of how many times that word appeared. So for the demo side of it, we can look right here. I, I'm in a test folder. So if we do PWD in the terminal, we can see this is the path, the absolute path to that folder. If I do an LS, we can then list out all the contents of that folder. So right now I just have the constitution in a TXT format uh, in that folder. If I switch over to my application and I run it, and all I need to do is copy and paste that path to the folder, not even just to the file, but just to the folder. I can paste that in here, and analyzing is done. Um, again, for one file that's kind of obvious, but for a lot, then you can actually, it'll show you, tell you when it's done. And if you can, I could have run this in the terminal as well. I just, I'm gonna show you guys this later. Now, if we go back, I can now see that we have a constitution.txt analyzed. Yes, I could have stripped this out. Uh, I probably should have. I'm gonna let you guys work on how to do that uh, as an extension if you would like to take this on yourself. So if I do, uh, either I could do VI or I could just say cat constitution. We can now see, look at the contents of that file. quite a few words. So we can see that there was a total word count of 7,640. Uh, this is interesting. So this has gonna have to do with how I strip things out. And we can talk about that further when we get into the actual code. But you can look and see here, we've got credit, that happened three times. 13th, again, this is gonna come into how we're stripping things out. Is that a word, is that not a word? We have that popping out once. Um, yays, two, year, happens 10 times. So you can kind of just go through and see we've got some numbers, some ads. You will see some places where there might be two words put together. Uh, and again, that's gonna come into how we're going to uh, clean or normalize the, each word and where do we make cuts. Um, we'll talk about that in a little bit. So con constitutionally, uh, transportation states is mentioned 124 times. So you just kind of go through and this would give you a way to look at that data and consume it in trying to understand what is in your files. And this could be for any, any use. It just was triggered in my mind for use, use in forensic uh, understanding of documents and evidence. So if we now move over to the code. We're going to start here in this file called folder analyzer. So this is obviously, you said, where, where, as you can see, where I had my main. We create a scanner, um, and that's going to allow me to give some input. I tell the user, please enter the folder path to the files you want analyzed. And then create an instance of uh, folder analyzer. 
and then I call it file analyzer, it's kind of interesting. So folder, folder analyzer, um, and then I just give it a scanner. Then it's gonna run file report, and when it's done all of that, then we'll just print out uh, analyzing done. So let's step through this. So scanner, that's pretty self-explanatory, we just create scanner, um, initialize it with the system dot in. We have our system out print line. So again, we're just printing to the console. And we saw that here. Then we want to take in the, well, we actually want to create an instance of the folder analyzer. So let's go up to the constructor. We do have a private variable of the folder path, which makes sense. We give in the folder path. We automatically set that as a global variable. And then we have a for loop. So for all of the um, folder names in that folder, we're gonna pull out the file name, which is of type string, and we're gonna run the file report on that file name. Getting the file uh, of list names, we just need to create a file, which again, I just import that. So it's a new file with the folder path, and we're gonna create a list. We're gonna get a list of all of the uh, names in that um, folder. And so it's just gonna return me a uh, string array, which is how we're able to iterate through it. We also have a get number of files in a folder, and that's just taking what we just did here and adding the length to it, so we just get a number of how big that array is actually going to be. And then we run the file report on each of these file names. So that's gonna take in a file name, We create an analyzed file uh, object, which we'll talk about in a second. All it needs is a file name. And then we're going to try to, we have to do a try catch block. So this is just gonna, this is a way that we can handle um, errors gracefully. So we have a buffered reader. We give it the a file reader, which takes in the folder path with the file name. You just have to add a slash in there as well. And that file name is obviously what comes in here. We have a char code, character code. And as we're reading the uh, the file with the buffered reader, it's going to give us uh, whatever the ASCII value is for that character. And then we have a word, and we're going to initially make it uh, empty. And then while the char code is not a negative one, which if we look here, the character read as an integer in the range of zero to six, uh, 65,553, or th sorry, 35. Um, and then it's negative one if it's at the end of the string. So that's why we're saying as long as it's not negative one, then we're going to proceed with this while loop. So we're going to add that uh, character code to the to our word, and by uh, casting it to a char, that automatically makes it a, a character. If the word contains any spaces or uh, end of line characters, then we're going to handle it being a word. And again, that's going to happen in handle word. We're going to make it uh, uppercase. Uh, and this is just because it seemed like it was a good normalization uh, for any kind of comparison later on that we need to do. And we're because we're going to be putting it into a map. Uh, so if there's any weird casing that happens throughout the document, uh, we're not going to make lowercase and an uppercase and two different words. Those are just gonna be the same because we're just caring about uniqueness in word. Obviously you can change that up and make it whatever you'd like. And then we take the word and re, uh, we clear it out for the next go around. And we get the next uh, character code. Then we close the buffer, buffered reader. If there's an exception, 
we printed out error trying to read the file, we give the file a name, and what the error was. And then we write to the file, we write, yeah, we write to file, um, analyzed file. So now that we've created this analyzed file uh, for, this speci for this specific one, we create a file, and this is going to be where we add the uh, analyzed.txt. So we're creating that file. We're going to keep the same folder path. We're going to leave it in that folder. We're going to add that name. Again, this is where I could strip off that .txt. I didn't, so we're just going to amend, uh, add to that file the analyzed.txt txt um, extension and then we're so we're going to create a new file with that name we're going to open up a file writer and pass in that file name old file object we tell it what the original file was give it its name give it a new line uh, tell it what its total word count was give it a little break and then we have a two string word occurrence map we have a two string word occurrence map and that's what we're going to append to the file writer. Then we'll close that file up. If there are any exceptions, again, we come down here, system out dot print line, folder analyzer, write file, um, and we say it, it failed and whatever the, the reason for that was. If we hop over here to the analyzed file, it takes in a file name. And so then we set it as our private uh, string. We have a word occurrence map, uh, which is going to be of type string for the key and for the value, it'll be an integer. And then we have a word count as well. So we set this to a hash map of string integer. Uh, so it'll be an, a, a hash map that's empty at that point and a word count of zero. To handle the uh, the word, we pass that, that in, whatever we have declared as the word. And again, we're really breaking at uh, either a new line or space. Now we have an array, a string array, and we're going to clean the word. So this is where a lot of ambiguity can come into play and what is it that you're actually trying to look for. In my case, what I'm doing is I'm gonna replace anything that uh, starts with an A through Z, lowercase or capital, or zero through nine with nothing. But then, and then I'm going to split it on the spaces. So this means that anything other than A through Z or zero through nine is going to get kicked out. And I'm gonna be, be left with this and then I'm gonna split it on any spaces. Then that, so that gives me then an, an array and I'm gonna cycle through that array of, of any of the words in that array. And I'm gonna to check to see, does the word occurrence map contain that word entry? So I'm gonna come here to the compute if present. And so we're finding out this because it's there, I wanna compute and I wanna update that value. So for that word entry, we're then gonna take the value and increase it because the, the sorry the word entry is the key and therefore then we want to create the value is going to be the counter and we want to increase that by one otherwise we're going to add the word add it to the word occurrence map and give it a value of one and then we'll also increment the word count if we need to ever get the file name we have a getter the get uh, word occurrence map this is just to get the word occurrence map, so it'll just return the map. And then uh, we talked about in the folder analyzer, the two string word occurrence map. This is just going to create a string that then gets added to the file. So it's just a simple, we have a st uh, string builder, and then we have a for loop that uh, for everything in the entry set of the word occurrence map, it's gonna be a, uh, what we call an entry, a single string integer mapping. And we're gonna append it to the the uh, string so we'll give it the key uh, the colon with spaces and the value and then a new line and then we just return uh, the string builder as just a, a dot to string we also have a get word account which just returns the word count well that's all i have for you guys today uh thanks for watching mm -hmm.